talk about progenitor cell therapy for hair loss or stem cells. This is something that we're doing quite often back home in India and it's been giving us good results. And when we look at the embryonic stage, you'll see that the epithelium becomes the placode and then the dermal cells become the dermal condescent, which then turns into the dermal papilla. And the communication that happens between the placode and the condensate is what triggers the formation of the lanuga or the hair follicle. And then you start getting your telogen and your anagen phases and this is how it happens. And at the telogen phase is where we have the highest communication between the bulge and the bulb barrier. The reason being is they're the shortest distance in the hair follicle. And the microcraft contains 85% of craniocephalic progenitor cells. It has less than 10% of the melanocyte progenitors. And it also has, when you look at the CD4 counts, CD44 plus, and it has the CD200 plus, which are all actuators, basically, for the micrograph to work and to form the new hair and stimulate the new hair formation. It's all vascular associated, so you have CD34 and CD146, because they're associated with the vascular tissue. That's why the quality is higher. But patient selection is critical, and we've discovered this the hard way because you know when somebody gives you the equipment they say oh it's great it's going to work on everybody and you're going to get everybody and work on it it's not necessarily true you've got to be patient selective stages one two three of androgenetic alopecia will work well especially stage one and two and first is the extraction which happens with three millimeter punches we take between three to four of this and this is how they look and then we place it into this dome if you look it has one side has those micro holes so each each of these holes has six blades. So there's 100 holes or pores with six microblades. So that's 600 microblades which splices the graft, which then filters it out so that we're able to get a solution from the graft material because we add some saline to this. And that goes into this machine, which spins it for about two minutes at 80 rotations per meter. And then we retrieve about three ml and add another ml. So we get four ml of solution, which we can use for injection with, with, with three to four, three millimeter punch grafts. And in summary, successful hair regeneration still remains a mystery, though, because it's not for everybody. We still have to be patient selective. And, it's, and the progenitor cell treatment is extremely successful when we've got the right patient. It's such a fascinating subject. When you look at PRP, it's probably one of the more controversial zones in aesthetic dermatology. Two major questions is, often when a product does so many things, it's not great at doing just one thing in particular. I think hair that I'll talk about is sort of the golden zone. In our research at Cornell and the University of Minnesota, we believe that hair loss in women is associated with an inflammatory type of response. So our targets for our research is to try to decrease the inflammatory response, which leads to microfibrosis and dropout of indeterminate hairs and a major cause of hair loss in women. So any of these energy-based devices that we're working with will be helpful in this setting. So what's the optimal treatment protocol? If you look at the articles in Derm Surgery, it compared using one every three months treatments versus three treatments once a month. Most people do one treatment every month for three months. And then the protocol that I utilize in my practice is then to increase the duration, so I move it to every other month at that time, and then every three months, which is, and then every six months if someone has a positive response. But the studies show that three treatments spaced out at one month intervals is the optimal treatment duration of this. The other thing that's important is the size of the needle that you implant as well. You don't want to use a needle that's too small because that can crush the platelets. So this is what I think is really the most important facet. This is a non-invasive hair measurement device. So we're now actually able to count hairs. You would have a standardized zone from treating five centimeters above the interglobella area and then five centimeters above the hairline. And you're able actually to have a hair density count for patients. So before we start PRP treatments, we're now able to look at the density of follicular units per square centimeter it also tells you the number of antigen versus catagen versus telogen hairs. It also gives you an index of the number of growing hairs versus vellus type hairs as well, and gives you what I think is the best photographic evaluation in this setting. And it gives you a computer readout. It takes all of about three minutes, and it's not expensive, and it's something that can be used by everybody in their office. So here you can see the evaluation of this imaging type of device, as you can see here. It just, just takes about two or three minutes again, and it gives you an exact image readout the number of follicular units 
increased number or lack of increased number of antigen hairs, hair diameter, shaft diameter, and the number of actually vellus versus terminal hairs. So I think this will really revolutionize all hair research, particularly with PRP. And I think that the longevity of these results is still unknown. Most people feel that if the target is indeterminate hairs and under genetic influence this process continues, PRP is sort of a lifetime program. The best thing for us is to determine what is the optimal maintenance type program Again, how little or how decreased number of treatments you can do over a long period of time and still maintain the effects. As dermatologists, we're in the self-esteem business, and I think it's important to recognize how much hair and hair loss plays a role in patients who are having that condition. So when your front desk says, this is your new hair loss consultation, and a lot of my staff will see somebody like this at the front desk, and I'm like, I don't know why she's here. She's here for hair loss. And then you get in the room, and this is what you see after they take the wig off. And so just remember your gut reaction to a lot of hair loss patients. As I talk to my colleagues across the country, actually, many of them don't like to see these patients. Why? Because they're labor intensive. It's often a very emotional subject. But there are a lot of different treatment options, and the treatment options do need to be tailored to the diagnosis. And is PRP part of the treatment option? Of course it is. The other thing that's really important is to discuss the barriers to treatment. Um, a lot of patients don't wash their hair frequently. They can't afford it. They um, don't want to wear their hair a certain style. But interestingly, there's a huge issue with African-American women and feeling that they have to look a certain way if they have a corporate job. And so you really do need to talk to women about that, especially when you will just say to them, just go natural, stop perming your hair. But this is a person who's trying to climb the corporate ladder at a bank and, need, and feels that they need to have straight hair. Connect with hairstylists, and these are people who can often work in conjunction with you as you're trying to transition patients out of damaging hairstyles, but also to come up with options for them where they can actually feel comfortable and beautiful. There are other things that you can do, and I would certainly make sure that you can incorporate the fake it till you make it. And so we use a lot of topic, and actually what I'll do after I do PRP and even at the consultation, I will go ahead and apply it. And patients are sometimes in tears because they're like, oh my God, I, can, I don't have to wear my wig anymore, and I look amazing. So I think this is a great thing for you guys to carry in your office. It is not expensive. It costs like $12, but you can just go ahead and put, them, put it on, send them out the door, and they look like they've had four PRP treatments and look amazing.